Hello there, I'm Jeff Moore. I'm uh, one of the woodshop captains here at Tinker Mill. Today we're going to walk you through how to use the, the Powermatic 2244 drum sander. This is a machine that, will, that in one pass will sand 22 inches. And if you turn the piece around and run it through again, it'll reach uh, 44 uh, inches because it's got a cantilever drum that allows the material to pass beneath the the drum on the, uh, outs on the outside of the sander. So to get started, you're going to want to roll the ma machine out. Dust collection hose is already hooked up. You're going to want to plug it in. Uh, and then you're ready to go. There's a couple things on the startup you need to be aware of. If this uh, conveyor is turned on when you start, when you power it up, you're going to get this flashing indicator here. That means that uh, you need to turn this off. Now it's solid, it's ready to go. The other thing that can happen is if somebody pushes in the e-stop, when you power it up, it's flashing. Anytime this is flashing, the drum will, it'll turn on, but it won't run. With the e-stop, it won't even turn on. So you release the e-stop, you get a solid light. The drum will come on and stay on, indicated by this, um, by this on indicator, which the drum is turning. As long as the drum is turning, spinning down even, the on, off, the on goes away, it's still spinning, it means that uh, if you open up the hood, be ready for it to be turning. This is the main power. After you plug it in, turn this on, you should get a solid indicator light. Millimeters, inches. This hand wheel up here moves the drum up away from the table, the conveyor table, or down. The clockwise lowers it, counterclockwise raises it. You can see, and you can't probably see it from there, but as you raise it, this number increases. If you zero it, now you know how far down you've moved it with this, this many turns. The hardest part of using this machine is actually loading the sandpaper. So before you load the paper, turn the power off to the machine, and then the spring clip pushes back. It's kind of hard, uh, but then you insert the tip of the paper in there with the, kind of get where, an idea where the, the paper is going to line up with the end of the drum. So as it comes around, line up the paper with the previous wrap, and you're going to keep going around. A little bit of a gap is fine. In fact, you want a little gap so that you know the paper isn't overlapped. And you wrap the paper up. So you get to the clip on the other end. So the clip on the other end has some extra springiness to it. So as you, as you uh, move the clamp to the opening position, you can see how it springs back here against the drum. What that does is it puts some extra tension on the sandpaper roll when you release it. That'll help keep the sandpaper tight to the drum. As the sandpaper heats up and stretches, it will allow, it'll take up that amount of stretch. A new sandpaper will just stretch anyway, just because it's new. So this is the function of that. And what you want to do, you open this clip up as far as you can, insert the tip of the paper in there as deep as you can get it. 
And when you let go, you see this clip didn't spring back as far. So that's put tension on the paper all along the, the, the drum. And that's loading the paper. Takes a little practice. Can be frustrating at times. Just stick with it, you'll get it. And close the close the lid. There's a couple different ways to get started with your initial height. One way is to lower the drum until you make contact with your material. And you zero it. Raise it up. Pull up material. Take it back to zero. That would be your first pass. Turn on dust collection. Start the drum. Torch conveyor. Not really cutting much off right now. <coughs> you can change the conveyor speed. You can also lower <coughs> the drum while it's running. Zero it. So I mentioned there's a couple of ways to uh, start off your initial height. One, that was one way. A second way is to make sure you have plenty of clearance. And I'm gonna mark this board with a pencil so I can see where it's actually standing. I know it's cupped, so I'll probably take the cupped side off first. There's also the option, or actually probably the need, to use the big eraser, that the other belt sander over there, to clean the sandpaper off. You start to Start the dust collection, turn on the drum. So keep in mind, taking too big a cut, or working with resinous wood like this pine, you're gonna end up with some buildup on there. So keep up with it, don't let it get too, too uh, far ahead of you. So make sure you keep your sandpaper as clean as you can. Extend the life that way. The other thing you wanna do is not just stand in one place on the paper. Use the full width of the drum as you uh, are working through your projects. So I mentioned the second way of getting the depth right. Make sure you have, it'll go under the sanding drum. And then we're... Start 
So we're going to make sure it's underneath the drum. Then we're going to lower. We're going to lower the drum. So there we're just now making contact. We're going to zero that. So you can see it started sanding about here, and we're taking off the center of the piece of lumber because you can see marks here, here. So you need to run it through a second time to get it all the same. You can't adjust the speed and the depth while it's sanding. So we're still not cleaned up here and here. It is pretty flat here. So one of the things you could do is turn it over and uh, work on the other side. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take it down about, I'm going to go slow, 12 thousandths. As the torque on the motor increases, these bars start to light up. The more bars you get, the, slow, the slower the conveyor will run. on the conveyor to accommodate the load on the motor. When you see this happening, you might want to release, reduce the amount of the cut you're taking. So got a little bit more here. All right, the pencil marks are all but gone. And you can flip it back over and finish the other side. When you're doing a sanding job and you don't walk away from the machine while, uh, while you're actually in the middle of a sanding uh, pass, stay with the machine. You can also stack up your work so you can run multiple boards through at a time. I'm just going to demonstrate, not, we're not going to contact the, the bed, but Basically, what you would do is you would start this piece in. As it starts to sand, you start a second piece in. And as it starts to sand, you can start in a third piece. 
as they come out the other side. So you can uh, sand multiple pieces at once. If you get into some trouble and you hear something wacky and you're not sure what's going on, hit the e-stop. That'll stop the machine, kill the power, and uh, then figure out what's going on. So there are some material guidelines posted on the wall, like the minimum thickness like, is uh, that you can sand is one thirty second. The minimum length is two and three eighths. The maximum height is like four inches. So just keep those in mind. Charts posted on the wall should help you out. If you run a piece through that's only like two inches, there's a good chance it'll kick back or get caught up inside the drum housing and tear up your sandpaper. So just keep those uh, limits in mind when you're running your sanding through. And those would be minimums. If it says two and three eighths, I probably wouldn't run anything less than two and three quarters, to tell you the truth. And <clears throat> where it says one thirty second, I would probably stay at, uh, you know, three sixteenths or something. A quarter of an inch would probably be what I, I would say is your minimum. If you need thinner than that, get a hold of me and I'll help you figure out there's a way to do it where you can go thinner. But uh, at this point, without any extra fixtures, just run it at 1 32nd at a minimum. Well, that about covers it. So when you're done, make sure the feed is off. Turn the power off. You're going to want to remove your sandpaper. And that's just basically releasing that clip and rolling it up as it comes off the drum. You want to make sure you take your paper, your uh, sanding, your abrasive off because someone else might come in and use it. And, uh, not so when you're done, you're powered off. You're going to unplug it. We want to leave the machine unplugged when it's not in use. and then just roll it back into its own position. Hope you enjoy using this sander, it's a nice tool.